All right, what is going on, guys? Let's get some portfolio reviewage going. Uh, first up is Benjo. So I just graduated this year, and I'm interested in how my current portfolio and knowledge slash techniques are and what I should focus on and improve on. <laughs> nice. That's hilarious, Jam. Okay, let's switch uh let's switch shots, huh? I'm like, where is that button? It's it's here somewhere. I'm calling you Barb. Thanks for the uh thanks for the resub. Four months in a row. Four times the prime. Oh no, it's Blue Din again. Uh, man, I really need to understand why that happens. Configure video. So blue. All right. Okay, let me let me make sure this is the right portfolio I am looking at. Yep, Benjo. Okay, just graduated from the UK, aspiring at a 3D environment artist. Oh, thanks, Tish. Thank you. Looks like chat is working wonders right now. Give me a second here. Why is that? And restream. There we go. Is it working now? Hooray! He has returned. Blue Den. Our arch nemesis, Blue Den. Okay. Dude, that's a cool name. Mr. Blazer. So, just graduated. Um, so, what I'm trying to do now with portfolios is uh, look at, like, how, uh, how they're formatted from, like, the, from the top down as far as, like, when what you say with your title, what your profile picture is, kind of like initial initial glance, like when I look at it, what how it feels. Is that uh, you know what I'm saying? So right off the bat, obviously you see a sphere, so you're like, oh okay, substance, substance. Um, now when I look at your portfolio itself, I see aspiring 3D environment artists. I mean, if you were, so I would remove the word aspiring because like if you were aspiring, then you wouldn't actually have any 3D on here yet. You're a 3D artist. You don't have to get hired to be a 3D environment artist. Right? What'll, what'll end up happening right here is eventually you'll get like intern or junior. So I wouldn't worry too much about uh, putting aspiring in there. You can be professional from the get go. Respio, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hello. Hi. Um, so, let's see here. Aspiring environment artist or 3D environment artist. Um, let's look at the uh, characters. Visual Tech, what's up, man? I wonder if this is you, and I don't know it yet. Baker, the game maker, what's up? How you doing? You're next. Um, okay, I need to start this. So, I wouldn't, this is very Mortal Kombat, I, I, uh, I like it. Um, so this is three years old. I would actually not have this on here if you want to be an environment artist, just because it, it detracts from like environment art, right? It's cool, like, and you're paying for pro, so I would just put it in your blog. I'm actually gonna click on your blog. Nice, oh, this is great. I like how you're covering stuff. Um, yeah, awesome. So I would put this in your blog. I don't know if you can change the order in which your blog posts show up, but uh, yeah. And then we've got a, a prop, it looks like. Whoops. So actually, when I look at this asset, I think um, 
So I think it looks like you have a pretty decent grasp on materials as far as like uh, roughness information. Uh, when it starts to break down a bit, I think is uh, finer material definition. Have to lower the music. We have a phone interview in 20 minutes. No, it's fine. It's okay, man. That's why that's why we vod this stuff. Um, good luck on your phone interview. So, when I look at this, I'm imagining like I don't know what this material is. So the roughness versus the the metal material is. I like the difference between the two. There's definitely a, a difference in range. Uh, where I think it could really benefit is trying to define this material more. Um, I'm assuming that that's paint and it's paint on wood just because of the way that it, it's uh, chipping or aging away. It's, yeah, it's that, Tej is right, it's that, it's that micro detail, like, tell me it's paint in the normal, right? And then, like, the wood that's under it it's not just wood, like it would be wood, but then it's scraped because it's also scraped like the paint is. So like when wood gets a gouge, sometimes it, uh, it can become lighter as well, right? And then thinking about uh, where like the darker kind of gritty materials would, would happen, like uh, oils and, and rust or like dirtying of the material itself from usage. That'll um, that'll really take this further. And then don't worry about the poly count. Just add enough to make that round. I know this is seven months old, but it's stuff for later, stuff for um, your future work. Okay. So next up is actually so this is good because this is because you want to be in a three D environment artist. Building environments is key to that, right? So I like that you're telling a story. There's there's something happening here. So my third year university project chose to create a uh, second level for oh so it's VR as well. All right, man, I never had the opportunity in school to do anything VR. Oh wow, that's cool. Uh oh right for anyone um. Let's uh let's do this really fast, for anyone following along in chat. Let me drop that there, um. So I guess because it's VR, it, I'm not sure how far you can take things. So I'll just point out the stuff that kind of like breaks the illusion, right? So uh, where the where the stumps are, and maybe this was intentional. Let me see here. So the hard edges, like the polygonal look, I'm assuming is intentional because I see it all over the place. Um, I'll just point out some key things that I think would really push this over the over the top. So adding a little bit of geometry to to change the curve of this roof, even if it's just to add a few dents. Uh, the water looking odd. You see these bands. That's the mipping. So like as it's getting further away, it's lowering in resolution by a power of four. So it just mips down, down, and down. And you're seeing the basically the mip bands. Uh, how to fix those, I wouldn't be able to explain very easily. I mean, it just kind of happens. I don't even know, like, temporal AA kind of gets rid of that. But, uh, yeah. So the other things I would say is this edge where the rocks meet the sand, uh, the lack of variation in the sand, and then just these hard edges and, like, where they meet everything. Um, everything is very, very simplistic in geometry. Uh, there's definitely some details over here that are that are more detailed than the rest of the scene. Like this chest that's down here. It's also a little dark, but this chest that's down here um, seems to have a pretty good, oh, I don't have the Photoshop open. Uh, it doesn't, this chest here actually seems to have the right amount of geometry to start selling the, the details of the material and the object. Curious, what's up? How you doing? Let's uh, let's do that. 
and let's turn this up. So what you balance wise, you probably want to be somewhere in that range so that you're you can still see everything. Um, even in shadows like back here, like that's getting pretty dark. Let's just see here. What is going on? There we go. Okay, so sampling that. See that's that's pretty that's pretty down there. Let me So and it's still a little the compression and obviously because there's no range to, to push around. Um yeah. You probably want it a little lighter than that. Especially that so open. Like I think maybe that's that's a okay range. But like I was looking at this and geometry count is really selling the shapes and it's definitely got like a style to it because of the curves, like this curve here, and this curve. And I like how this comes down. Carrying that across, like that's stylized, right? So when you look at this this shot up here, you kind of want that curve here as well. And wherever you can add that geometry to kind of get away from geometric shapes, totally go for it. Because that's, that's how you get away from what looks like 3D and get more into the realistic or even stylized work is gonna is just gonna look better if you if you go that route. Um, we're just trying to get away from hard edge geometry. Quilly, Willie, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, this table. Like I'll, I'm going to go into this one a bit more than I should. Just because, like, it's really, uh, it's really important. I don't know if, like, this paper is textured onto the, the wood material. But don't don't do that just because you'll limit yourself. Like you can't because of that you can't tile the wood on the table very much, and you'll probably want to tile it a little bit just to get that resolution up, up some. And then by having these separate or modeled, uh, and then placed, you can do things like have them off the edge like this, right? And that's that's awesome when you can when you can have that look. Where you have like paper hanging off the edge of a uh, off the table. Let's see if I can, because you can get like curved paper too, like where the paper's uh, curling. And like having that is so much more dynamic than having it like stop at the edge of the table, because then you're just emphasizing that that hard edge of the table again, right? Like this this shape, and it just further pushes the silhouette just being hard edged, which is like, oh, that's geometry. It's just, it's 3D. So when you can, when you can break away from those, like where it's really working is up here. You see how like that's kind of wavy? And like, obviously it's because it's like uh, the material of the tent kind of curled up. Um, that helps a lot. Like this is really squared, right? If you put just a little bit of sag on the bottom of this window frame and then just took this and turned it into a roll, like I can probably even, probably can't. Let me see if I can, <laughs> I'm not gonna try. Um, just doing stuff like this and then maybe it's, maybe it's tied, right? And then you have a little bit of stuff tied up here and then that'll, that'll kind of pinch the little spot there. Sorry, I'm using my mouse, it's getting ultra clicky. Um, and they have a little bit of string. There's so much more like detail and stuff going on for not very much more geometry. Um, and then with the these books, I think maybe like, uh, so you've already made the book, you've already unwrapped it and you've got the textures, right? Just go and duplicate the, the texture set, like a new PSD and just change the order of these runes. It looks like I wrote poop. Totally intentional, totally did it on purpose. Um, yeah, if you can change these runes, so it's just in different orders and stuff, that's gonna help so much, which is breaking it up. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can. Oh, and then, so you've got the ground here, and it's, it's like this, right? Let's, because I can't see, because it's really dark, we'll say that like, that's kind of the, the shape of the ground. So this is all blank space. 
So if you can either put like a rug here or like a really big rug here, something just to break up the ground. Um, that, that works wonders. And it doesn't cost very much. Like if your ground is flat and you're going for VR, you probably can't do very much geometry, right? Uh, just a rug can be a single quad. Maybe you, if you can, you pay for a little extra geometry on the end here and you just like curl the corner up and you're good to go. Or scrunch it up so it's got like a little bit of a, a ripple in it. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. We have three and a half minutes left. So I've, already, I've talked about your environment a bit. Let me look at this one. So this one's pretty cool. Again, with the edge and like, uh, oh, that's cool water. Like, um, oh, yeah. So see, and the concept is very transitioned to like this, this curves. Like even, you're doing it a little bit here, just totally go crazy with it and see, see what you can do. Cause like you could add more geometry just to make that happen, that transition. Um, and I think that that alone would uh, would work really well. What's Teach saying? I think this piece needs some contrast uh, in shape and color. It feels very soft. I mean, I think it I think it can be soft. I mean, if you're following the concept, like I I don't I want to know why you didn't do the cactuses or the cacti. Just because they add that color pop, right? The the glowing blue, like you just really push it, push that glow, so it's like emitting the light. And then the rocks, right now, just aren't pointy enough to be the same look. Do they have that? Yeah, they have the the rings in there, so that's good. But it's just it's lacking the the amount that you would expect. It also looks like you've baked these out, so. There's definitely uh, some room for sharpening these edges and kind of making it um, much sharper. Let me actually, let me look at what else is in here. I should look at this one. You're probably really interested in getting some opinions on this one. So I like the fact that you're you're putting effects in there and you're animating I've yet to animate a camera in a scene <laughs> in any of my portfolio pieces, so uh, good job. I like the swinging rope. So in this shot, it really needs like either, like I know there's a light above, but like uh, the light doesn't look like it's touching this wall. Graffiti looks pretty good. The way this opens too, think about how it would open in real life or like look at like uh, how doors open in Aliens or in um, any like uh, cyberpunk or futuristic type of game. That camera FOV change. Yeah, that feels good. So this looks, this is pretty rad. This square for up here is, is um, it feels like it needs more to it. Just because it doesn't, I can't tell. Like it just looks like a quad, right? With a missive behind it. Let me, uh, what am I doing? Oh, I can't copy an image. It's a video. What am I doing? No, what? No, we don't want that. Uh, let's, oh no. Time is up. So like, there we go. Let's get some, some highlights. All you have to do is in that emissive is add some gradients so that uh, you get that, that brightness hit. Man, what is, what is going on? It just, you know what I mean? It needs to look like there's a tube light behind it. Kind of losing it, so I've gone crazy, guys. Maybe it's because it's mid, yeah, mid tones, and then just in general, like the scene is just really dark. So I think if you were to go here, and it's very, very dark. If 
Now see, when I turn this up, you can see there's actually no information in here. You gotta make sure that there's information all the way to the edge. Rusty, what's up? How you doing? Oh, rusty -o. I'm just, I'm gonna say, I know those are zeros, but I'm sorry. I had to. Um, you can see that, uh, obviously, there's some compression stuff going on just because of the resolution and what the image is saved as and all that jazz. But, like, there, there's actually no information in this area. So, like, if you can keep the scene bright enough so that your darkest areas still have information where you can see the wall literally meeting the floor, that's really important. This is very similar to Reed's uh, scene. I like the, uh, the little computer area. But like if you have that range, then you can in Photoshop move your histogram range around and make it as dark as you want. Um, yeah. So I, I have to move on to the next portfolio, but uh, I would say what's going on with your, your materials in uh, your substance materials is that just at first glance, to be careful with the cracks being too uniform across the surfaces. Um, going too crazy with the, uh, be careful not to go too crazy with the slope blur uh, min and max, just because like it gets very like uniformly damaged. And that like some people would say it's, it looks too procedural. It just doesn't look realistic enough, right? Uh, and then the next thing I would say is really pay attention to uh, how your roughness is generated because right now your roughness is actually lacking a lot of um, range and I don't like the roughness between each wood board for example would be slightly different even if it's just by like two or three in value um, yeah and think about like the depth like you're it, this one's really lacking depth where like you can expect these little crevice areas to go pretty far back in in the uh in depth of the of the wall you get the depth the depth yeah no i know i know what i'm saying right yeah um but uh yeah i mean i think you need to concentrate on shape and definition uh concentrate on your lighting and then above all else Concentrate on your roughness when it comes to making these substance materials because roughness is is like 95% of the material It's it's pretty uh, it's pretty important um, But yeah, I think you need you need a scene like this With really polished focus materials and you're freaking you're golden you get one of those, you'll start turning heads, and then from then from then on, you're just turning heads, snapping necks, left and right, like a freaking ninja. Uh, and that's how you get hired as a hitman in the games industry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to switch over, and we're going to look at the next portfolio. Thanks for submitting your portfolio, and I look forward to seeing some more stuff if you if you are on the, uh, the uh, Discord. I'm like, my brain, my brain. It's a little busy at work today. All right, be right back.